Alright, so a couple people uh, have asked me to post a video about um, the ATF firing system that I've acquired. Um, ATF uh, stands for Advanced Technique Fireworks. Uh, the website is atf-us.com. Uh, it's owned and operated by Mike Corbelo. And I gotta say, Mike is one of the nicest guys I've ever met. And his wife Ruth is just as nice as she can be, and or as hospitable as anyone could ever be uh, to have not met someone like myself. But um, anyhow, I'm real excited. This is the first year that I'm shooting with computer fire. But um, you know, I've seen a lot of the systems out there, and, and the uh, the Starfire and the Pyromate and um, yeah, they're really nice. They're just really expensive for the hobbyists, and even this is expensive for a hobbyist. Um, but you know, for what it does, it's 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 pretty sweet. Um, you know, f first off, this uh, the system, kind of the brain of it is right here. This is the sim. It's just the computer interface module, um, and essentially this goes out. Uh, well, it connects to your computer. The uh, um, that's I guess that's an old I don't know it used to be like is it maybe a PS2 port or yeah I guess there's an adapter that Mike sells or that you get with the sim that goes to a uh, serial connection and then I've just got a serial to USB and uh, as you can tell I'm actually running this on a MacBook Pro uh, which Mike will not support um, don't think he's a big Mac fan but. Uh, I'm running boot camp in Windows 7 and that seems to be working just fine. Um, but essentially the uh, the M150 or the computer module there um, connects to the M156 module and uh, that it, that's the main uh, module. Uh, it does have a battery in it uh, as well as the computer module. They both have batteries that are chargeable um, through the those ports right there and you can test for battery on both uh, and you can see uh, that there. Uh, it also comes with a you can plug in this lamp if you want it on and just flip it on and off and then a key switch for your arm and then you have to reaffirm the arm in the uh, firing system software but um, my system um, I don't know if Mike sells them anymore, but they use this, what I call a quad case, and uh, it comes with two of these. Obviously, it uses these hinges to make a, a nice little case, and there's 24 cues uh, you know, that's divided over two slats. And you just use this rotary knob to select uh, whatever slat number or letter ready you're going to use. Um, so all that's connected by, I think it's DB25. It's like an old printer cable, but um, from what I understand, they're a little bit juiced up. I think these, these use 22 gauge wire inside. Uh, and then the connections between the SIM and the M156, and I'm assuming if you connected multiple M156s from the SIM uh, or chained them off of the other M156, you would use this uh, cable. I'm not sure what it is, but it looks to me like it's an XLR type terminator uh, termination on the end. Uh, another thing that I like, and I've, you know, I've heard people like them and they don't like them, are uh, the actual uh, ports themselves. It's basically just a, you know, a spring-loaded uh, device around a screw. And I found them extremely easy to uh, put your match in, get good continuity. Uh, like I said, I guess this is referred to um, as an ODA system because the way that it branches out with these DB25s. But, um, you know, I, I'm by no means, I'm brand new to this. I'm not an expert to this, so Mike, don't get mad at me. Uh, you know, it's, uh, this is very untechnical. I just know when I was looking at this, Mike's got really great details on his website, but, you know, I just, I think I could explain it in dummy terms. Um, but essentially, like I said, um, I'm running uh, this. The system that I'm running actually has uh, more cues because I have an extra uh, four, well, extra uh, 
quad case that has extra four slats. And what I do is run those uh, on my ends. So for example, you know, position one all the way on the left uh, may be the same as position five all the way on the right. And, you know, they would both be on A and everything would simultaneously fire. Uh, you know, if you're using more than the 156, because uh, the M156 gives you 156 addressable cues, um, which would be 12, um, you know, obviously 12 times 12 is 144. So, you know, you'd, you could have uh, up to six of these um, units here. And then the actual, that's 144, and then the actual 12 cues on the M156 are also addressable. So 156 addressable cues. Um, per M156, and like I said, you can always upgrade and get another M156. Um, on the computer end of things, um, software is pretty simple. Um, you know, you just, I've already loaded the file, uh, you know, I've scripted everything this year in Finale, and uh, exported it to ATF, and it's just called a show file, it's a .sho. Um, I opened it up with a text editor, and actually, um, uh, uh, fellow that Mike uh, or any pyro uh, was kind enough to tell me you know how to go in and change the COM port um, you know to fork to communicate with the sim but uh, you know once you're ready to go you can go up here to test and you can test your continuity uh, with your script and uh, you can see now I'm <clears throat> I'm guessing just because of what's here and I think what I've seen is the computer module is capable of controlling up to 128 of the M156 modules, which, you know, I'm never going to do anything that big. But uh, as you can see here, uh, it found the M156 module, and uh, all the pink is stuff that's being used in my script, and these down here are unused uh, in the show this year. So all these cues are going to be used and uh, I've, I've got a couple test LEDs uh, and that's what's catching continuity two up on slat M and then just one down here Q3 on um, slat A so you go in there and you can see your continuity um, you know but I've got the file loaded um, this uh, it's a little bit larger but you have to use a WAV file and I think what it's doing is it's just using like a Windows media player like a DLL some sort of codec in the background to actually play the music. So, you know, the, the music, the WAV file has to be in the same location as the SHO file that you open, and uh, it works. I've had better luck with, uh, you know, it finding and syncing up if you just have it on your desktop. But uh, I'm going to go in here, and uh, the system is armed, and I'm going to go ahead and tell it to fire automated, and it's going to stay, do you want to start from the beginning? Yes. And then I'm going to hit power on modules. It's still in safe mode from the software side. And are you sure arming will allow firing? Yes. So it's saying armed. Now, as soon as I hit go, it's going to go in here. And, uh, you know, it's just going to start down. And it gives you a, a rundown of what's going, you know, from finale. It's pulling all that information. So, um, you know, if I hit this, it's just going to start loading my script. Um, and it says, this will shoot the show now. Uh, do you want to continue? Yes. So there goes the music. Sorry, these bugs are flying all over me. So you saw the first cue pop there on the M156 module. There was a second one. There's a third one. So everything fire, you know, just on that test that I have. Now the cool thing, I can stop the show, and it stopped. Um, and Mike actually had to do this at the demo. There's some sort of issue. I can't remember what they wanted to look at, but you can actually start this from right where you stopped it, um, and you can also go, I think, to any point in the show and start it. But, um, you know, let's just say you want to abandon everything 
uh, you can actually, when you're done, I can just close out and abort the chute. You know, show's finished, but I can go in here, fire manually in the leftovers, and go in here too. You know, obviously nothing's going to be left over, but, you know, if I wanted to hit five, um, you know, I would just hit it and I could fire that, you know, each cues individually uh, from the computer like that. Um, these damn bugs driving me crazy. But um, that's about it. Uh, I didn't cover. Those are just safety shunts. Um, you know, if the, if the uh, XLR type connectors or the DB25 isn't used, I don't, I don't use the shunts on the DB25 connectors. Uh, but obviously these, these just Y out. Uh, to other places, and they can daisy chain and do all that good stuff. But um, like I said, it's um, it's a pretty amazing system. And if you consider what you know, some of the others are charging. Um, you know, it, it's it just seems like a great deal to me. Um, you know, yeah, it's it, it does have to be wired. Um, it's really not that big of a deal. You can just buy yourself a massive cable to run out to the field to your modules and uh, I mean me and a buddy share a uh, thousand foot cable so I don't think I need anything more than that shooting mainly 1.4 but um, yeah very cool system uh, I'm still learning it like I said uh, don't exactly look at me as the you know everything I'm saying is correct I think it's it's close enough to be dangerous uh, and it's like I said, I'm really excited about the show this year, and uh, I'll be posting different stuff. The show's going to be uh, 20, I think about 25 minutes, just under. So that's it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, comments, I'd love to hear them. Uh, and again, you can check out Mike at uh, www.atf-us.com. Uh, great guy. Uh, great system. All right. Y'all have a good one.